and welcome back. About a year ago on this channel we built a low voltage vacuum tube amplifier. And actually this is it right here. Uh, it's got just four tubes, uh, two dual triodes and two single triodes, uh, two speakers, two tiny little transformers. As a matter of fact it's really just one amplifier doubled up uh, and that's because I was running on 48 volts uh, and each of the heaters were 12 volt heaters so I ran all four of the heaters in series and uh, essentially having two amplifiers gave us a little more sound. Uh, but there's, well, there's a lot of aspects about this that I'm not happy with. Uh, I will say that despite how little I knew back then, uh, some would say I still don't actually know all that much, but despite how little I knew back then, this thing sounds way better than it has any right to. Uh, but there is one aspect that I would really like to change, and that's these little output transformers here. I didn't do any impedance matching and well, personally, I don't really like the idea of an output transformer, but vacuum tubes are high voltage, low current devices and speakers are high current, low voltage devices. Well, that's why we have output transformers to transform one into the other so that way we can drive a speaker with our vacuum tube. But there is another class of amplifier called OTL. This stands for Output Transformer Less. Uh, so that's what I want to try and build today. But usually OTL amplifiers are running at like 300, 400, 600 volts. I'm going to try and do it at under 50 volts. Uh, now, now I think I'm going to use the same 48 volts that I'm using on this. 48 is technically under 50, but uh, that's the goal. So I have a couple ideas. I'm really not all that clever when it comes to OTL. So this is kind of a foray into unknown territory, but let's hop over to the bench, take a look at the ideas that I have, and hopefully by the end of the video, we'll have a pretty cool OTL amplifier. All right, first things first, let's give a quick listen to the original low voltage amplifier to give us a kind of baseline for what we're trying to achieve, if not exceed with the OTL version. Now I want to kind of stress test this, so I'm going to play a few short snippets from a few different songs that cover a, a very wide genre of music uh, because I want to see how this thing handles uh, wildly different styles. Alright, it still sounded pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, it did fall on its face a bit with the heavier metal stuff, uh, but that's not unexpected. Heavy metal is hard on amplifiers and speakers because there is a whole lot of musical elements going on at the same time. Now here is the schematic of just one half of the low voltage amplifier that we were just listening to. Uh, we did make quite a few mistakes. Uh, we didn't put any capacitors on the cathodes of the amplifying stages here. There's no coupling capacitor on the input and our plate resistors are awfully low. So we're not gonna get a whole lot of gain out of those. Now I just took total guesses at the resistor values that you see here at the time and uh, really that construction style hasn't changed a whole lot. <laughs> I still just make total guesses. Uh, but essentially this is based on the Fender Champ amp. We have the input signal coming in to the grid of the first triode uh, and then that gets amplified, goes into the grid of the second triode. That gets amplified yet again goes into the grid of the third and final triode. And this triode is our uh, driver triode for the uh, transformer. But what I wanna do is I want to eliminate this output transformer. And there's a lot of clever ways to do this. Uh, OTL amplifiers have really wild construction techniques that allow them to drive speakers with quite a lot of power. Uh, but I am not a clever person. <laughs> I'm, I'm very much so a brute force person. So I think what I'm gonna do is literally brute force my way through this. I'm just going to uh, eliminate the transformer here, run 48 volts directly into the plate, and then just put the speaker 
water on the cathode to ground. <laughs> it's dumb and it should not work, but uh, well, I'm gonna give it a shot. Uh, and so this is the schematic for the first piece that we're going to test. Uh, you will notice, first of all, that I have a coupling capacitor coming into the input. I have a potentiometer here for volume control. Uh, and then the first triode has a much, much larger plate resistor at 100,000 ohms. Uh, and then we go through another coupling capacitor into the second triode, which has a 68,000 ohm plate resistor to give even more amplification. And then that just goes into our final triode, which is uh, literally just brute forcing its way through an eight ohm speaker. And on the original low voltage amplifier, I used a dual triode for this and then a large single triode for this, but I think I'm going to use this same large single triode for all three steps. Uh, and that single triode is the 1-2-B-4-A. Ah, how many of you guys are running down to the comments to scream at me for saying 1-2 instead of 12? Uh, for anybody that's completely lost as to what I'm talking about, we're going to take a quick little aside here. Uh, in a previous episode, I was reading out tube numbers and I said 1-2-SQ-7 and whew, that ruffled some feathers. It's supposed to be 12, not 1-2. Uh, there was some upset people about that. Uh, I'm sorry I upset you. Uh, many people took it uh, upon themselves to inform me that those first two digits are the filament voltage and therefore should be said as 12. And you're absolutely right. Uh, there is a specific reason why I uh, read them out individually, but uh, first let's address the filament voltage. And you're right, the first two digits are the filament voltage. Uh, so the 6AU6 uses a 6 volt heater or 6 volt filament. The 12AU7 or 12B4A uses a 12 volt heater. I mean, unless you hook it up in parallel and then it's a it's a six volt heater and it has the pinout for that, but uh, never mind. The uh, 2D21 is very obviously a, t a, a six volt heater. 2D21, six volt? Yeah, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, the 705A is absolutely a, f a five volt heater. <sighs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah, that, yeah. Um, so the, uh, <laughs> The 4CX250F is without a shadow of a doubt a 26.5 volt heater? What? <sighs> All right, so the first two digits are the filament voltage, except for when they're not. <laughs> but you, you guys are absolutely right, I get it. 12B4A is the natural way to say it, and it is the way I should be saying it. Uh, but there is a specific reason why I read them out individually, and that's because I have a short background in aviation. When you're talking over the radio, you read the numbers individually to ensure that there's no ambiguity or misunderstandings. So you don't say I'm landing on runway 18, you say I'm landing on runway 18. By the way, that stands for 180 degrees on the compass. So, you know, who knows how the numbers are matching up. So you always read the numbers individually to ensure that it is clearly understood. And when I'm sitting alone in a room all by myself, speaking into the void, it triggers the same muscle memory as talking over the radio. Uh, but if you guys won't get in the comments and absolutely set me aflame, I will make a concerted effort to say 12 before A from here on out. All right, rant over, let's get back to work. All right, we've got our breadboard set up here for testing. Uh, it's set up exactly like our schematic that we just took a look at. Uh, essentially, the first uh, 12 before A is set up as an amplifier. The second 12 before A is another amplifying stage. And then the third 12 before A is the driver for our speaker up here which is a three watt, eight ohm uh, speaker. Now I have two uh, power supplies set up here. The first is 12 volts for the heaters. We'll go ahead and uh, plug that in to get the heaters warming up. And then the second is 48 volts for the plate. Now, if I hear any sound at all through the speaker, 
uh, I'll be confident that we can just essentially crank up the number of 12 B4As that we're using here to get more volume and power through that speaker. Uh, but all we're aiming for now is hearing something out of the speaker. So I'll go ahead and hook up the 48 volt plate voltage here. Uh, okay, that should be uh, ready to go. We've got both of our potentiometers here at half. So once I hit play, we'll have to turn those up until we hear something out of there. So we'll go ahead and hit play on our phone here to get some music going into it. <laughs> and even at half, I can already faintly hear something coming out of the speaker. But let's, uh, let's crank it all the way up. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I can hear something coming out of the speaker. And it's it's quiet, but it's not that quiet. And it actually sounds really good. Let me get the uh, microphone over here. Maybe we can hear it a little better. So there we go. We we have a a functioning OTL amplifier running at just 48 volts off of just three tubes. Uh, so it's time to expand this out dramatically. And I'm going to use, I think, six driver tubes. Right now I've just got one and I'm gonna go for six times the amount of power to push through this. Uh, so, uh, man, uh, you know what? I think it's just time to build this thing. So let's build it. Time for a super fast time lapse. All right, here it is in all of its finished glory. Starting with the wood case, this came out way better than I ever could have hoped. I used a piece of, I believe this is oak, uh, and I just sanded it really smooth and then put some tongue oil on it and it came up looking stunning. Now as for the PCB mounted to that wood case, it is insanely dense. Uh, this is, it's actually way, way too dense. This should be spread out probably to double the size. Uh, the 12B4A here is a pretty spicy tube. It likes to run a little hot, uh, and I am stressing them quiet heavily. Uh, in some off-camera testing I did on the breadboard, I actually bumped the number of driver tubes up to four, and we actually uh, put a little plate resistor for all the driver tubes to try and measure the current that was going through them, and it came out to something like 45 to 50 milliamps, uh, and the 12B4A is actually only rated for 35 milliamps, <laughs> so we're way driving them hard. We're driving them so hard, in fact, that they should be red plating, but they're not, and the only reason I can think as to why they're not is because we're running at such a lower voltage, uh, but they get very hot uh, and that could cause problems in the future. First of all, it's a lot of heat in a small space. Uh, second of all, my uh, sockets here go directly into the PCB and that could cause thermal stress and cracking on the tubes. Uh, and that also means that the PCB is going to be absorbing a ton of heat as well. So we could have a PCB failure. Uh, so this thing is really good in a short burst, but it is not built for endurance at all. But when I say it's really good in a short burst, I mean it. Let's go ahead and kick it on. I put two power switches on here because I was uh, worried about inrush current. Uh, so one power switch flips on four of the tube heaters, the other power switch flips on the other four tube heaters. Uh, but I really don't think I needed to worry about that. That was kind of a, an overkill uh, solution. So we'll go ahead and flip it on. And then we'll turn the two volume potentiometers here down to about halfway. Now, one of these potentiometers is a gain potentiometer on the input. So it's going to pull our input uh, towards ground and kind of control the overall gain that we're getting out of the amplifier. The other potentiometer I'm calling my uh, red plate potentiometer uh, because it's controlling the input into the grid of the six driver tubes. Uh, and so if I feel like I'm pushing the driver tubes too hard or they're running too hot, 
I can turn this one down a little bit and cut back on some of the current that's flowing through them. So now that it's all warmed up, we'll turn my little cell phone on here and we'll start playing a song. Now I'm sure you guys can't hear that. It is incredibly quiet right now, but that's because we've got uh, both of our potentiometers at half. If I turn them any less than half, I can't hear anything. Uh, but we'll crank up the red plate potentiometer. There we go, that's a more respectable volume. Now we'll start turning up the volume potentiometer. That is a huge amount of volume. I have to talk very loud to be heard over it, and I'm not even sure I can be heard over it. So we'll crank that back down. It is, I can confidently say, it is almost twice as loud as the old low voltage uh, amplifier with the output transformers. I cannot believe how much power these 12B4As can pump through that speaker. So that was with the uh, kind of jazzy song. There's a couple different songs on here that I wanna test out, just like we tested out on the low voltage version, and uh, see how they sound. I'm particularly interested about how the heavy metal song sounds. So there we have it, the songs sound so much better with so much more volume. And the heavy metal song in particular was the one I was most interested in because it, it's a very sonically complex song. Uh, this is actually one of Mick Gordon's earliest Doom remixes, long before he did the actual soundtrack to Doom. Uh, and there's a lot of stuff going on there, and it caused the old low voltage uh, amplifier to just completely fall on its face and sound like just noise. Uh, but on this one, you can hear all of the individual elements that are going on pretty clearly, and it just sounds great. As a matter of fact, the best uh, review that I can give of it is that I stopped analyzing the sound and started just rocking out. So you know your amplifier's good when you stop analyzing every aspect of it and you just sit back and start headbanging a little bit. <laughs> So there we go, an output transformerless amplifier running on just 48 volts, putting out a good amount of sound and very high quality for what it is. I could not be happier with how this ended up. I think it looks absolutely stunning. It sounds amazing. And the only thing I'm worried about is longevity. But in short bursts, this thing is killer. <laughs> so I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. And I'm going to turn the volume up and just rock out to a little early Mick Gordon some more.